Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. You look so lovely out there. So I just want to say a big welcome to each and every one of you, our first-time visitors or all-the-time visitors. Welcome to our Adventurers and Pathfinders Day. Be blessed and enjoy yourselves today, okay? Amen. Great Sabbath. Good morning to all of you who are here at the Emmanuel Seventh-day Adventist Church this morning on this Pathfinder and Adventurer Day. I want to welcome you. It's a great day to be alive, to be in God's house, to be worshiping with believers, and to receive the blessing and give glory to God that is due him. I want to bring you greetings from our office and the leaders and elders of the Emmanuel Church, and I want to make special mention to our conference officials who are in the house today. I want to thank Sister Gordon who is here. She's no stranger to Emmanuel. Can you stand please, Sister Gordon? Thank you, thank you. Pastor Stephen Stewart, um, you'll hear an introduction about him. He is the Associate Director for our Florida Conference Pathfinder Adventurer Department Ministries. I want to also recognize, now um, I should not have done that, Juliet, who is our adventurer cluster, cluster coordinator. Um, she is relatively new to that position. We want to thank you for being in attendance today as well. I see that Solid Rock um, is here with us as well as our sister church. Who, el who else is here? Windermere is here. Where is Windermere? Don't be shy. Windermere is here. Who else is here? Who is it? Forest Lake, where is Forest I see you. For raise your hand, Forest Lake. Who else is here? Everybody else is a member. <laughs> Almost. Your membership is on its way, huh? Oh, I was got to have you. I just have a few announcements that I want to share with the church. Um, coming from the Family Life Department, December 16th and the 17th, Sister Brooks, December 16th and the 17th. There's a married couples retreat happening right here in Orlando. Somebody say amen. amen. Um, enhance and build and strengthen our relationships, family dynamics as well. Learn how to communicate with your partner. Manage conflict together. Solve problems as a team. There is a registration fee, but it's you need to see Sister Brooks um, and or Walter Brooks, her husband, who is sitting right next to her. You, want, you don't want to miss this. This is December 5th, 16th, and the 17th, located at the Holiday Inn and Suites right here in Orlando. So please see Sister Brooks, Elder Brooks, or her husband to get more information on how you can reserve your spot for that time. I also want to, let, I want to get some feedback from Pale Horse Rides. That was our seed sowing event that happened last weekend. Of course, many of you were in attendance. Let me let you know that we do plan. We are right now planning on following up with those who have attended. We did have guests who came every night. Amen. Um, we want to thank Evans High School and Orange County Public Schools for opening up their facility to help us um, bring that seed sowing event into the community. So the Pale Horse Rise with being the 500th anniversary of the Protestant Reformation, I believe it is a success. And we're not done. We're still sowing seeds, Emmanuel. Amen. We're determined to become a church that makes a difference. Yes. And how many of you learned something? Amen. You like to have something like that again? Yes. Very soon? Yes. In the next couple of weeks, we're still partnering with Voice of Prophecy. We're looking at bringing Revelation Speaks Peace, which is a 24-part 24 24 uh, presentation on Revelation. We're looking to bring that uh, to he here. Uh, to this community and to Emmanuel in the next couple of weeks. As you can see, um, our last session of Pale Horse Rides was here, and we had planned and intended for our screens, our televisions to be in place, um, but they're not in place yet. But the brackets are here. The brackets are here, and I can see that those who are Elder Smith and, and Brother Daniel, we have one side that is powered already, so the brackets are here. We're get, getting ready to, to get the televisions. And I think it's best for us to wait for, for a holiday. We need a sale, 
right? We need a sale. So pretty soon you'll, you'll see those 65-inch um, screens coming. They'll be installed and we'll move forward. I just want to let you know that that's happening. I also want to give a word of, of thank you. Thank you to the church family for, for loving on me. Loving on me for Pastor Appreciation Month. Um, it was felt. It is felt. And above the, the cake and, and the gifts, which are really received, and, and um, I'm using them and I'm working on them, I need your prayers. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your pastor and the family. We are pastoral families are continually under attack. I'm asking the church family to lift us up. If you know God, if you know how to talk to God, if you know how to distinguish God's voice above any other, I'm asking you to keep us in prayer as we lead God's people here on this side of eternity. Um, Youth Day is November 18th, correct? Youth Day is November 18th. Please plan for that. That's coming up. And board members, I want to let you know, too, that our board meeting will be on Sunday, November 19th at 4 o'clock. Please plan accordingly. Those are the announcements I have for us. We have a long day, but it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. This is the first of its kind here um, in a long time here at Emmanuel. So let us... Enjoy God's presence. Amen. Let us help our children to enjoy God's presence. And let's encourage one another. Pathfindering is still strong. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's so nice to see everyone here. I want to thank all of you. First of all, let me say thank you to the church. If you did not say yes, we could not have a Pathfinder and Adventure Club here. And I say thank you for your support. We have some very special people this morning, Pastor. I want to say thank you to Pastor. You have a special pastor. I love this man. He's a sweetheart. He is. He has a wonderful family. And like he said, lift the, fa the pastors up in prayer. You have a church that have a pastor that loves pathfindering. Not every church you walk into, you have a pastor that supports the club. So pastor, on behalf of the Pathfinder Club, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your support. I know it's not easy, but you're always there for your churches. And I say thank you on behalf of Windermere and Emmanuel. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the clubs that are here this morning. But before I introduce the clubs, um, I want to, to call your Pathfinder director that has come forward to lead the club here. Elise, I want to say a special thank you to her. Church, I want you to support her. <laughs> Pastor Stewart, please come here beside me. I know my duty was to introduce mm -hmm. the clubs, but I want you to say a special thank you to this young lady. And I'll tell you why when we're done. Well, definitely, <laughs> we want to say a special thank you. You know, um, I've often said, I've often said, the hardest workers, some of the hardest workers, if not the hardest workers in the church, you're going to find that they're going to be your pathfinder and adventurer leaders. And everyone associated with the pathfinders and adventurers. My sister, I don't know how many hours you spend here. Is this your second home? 
No, my first home. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard, you heard it right there. So on behalf of uh, the conference and of this church and of all of these children's and parents, we want to thank you. Where's our adventure director? So you're wearing two hats. Yes, sir. Have mercy. Don't get a third because then you'd be like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. No, we don't. But we are so thankful for you and your efforts. And church, listen, don't burn her out. Don't burn her out. We, I guess we need, we need someone to take over one of her roles. Amen. 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 So we're so thankful for all of your efforts. This church thanks you. And most of all, God thanks you. Amen. I'd like to have Miss Cheryl. Please stand. Please stand. Miss Cheryl is our state secretary for the conference. So she works with Pastor Stuart and Pastor Pedro. So she works with the state. Thank you, darling. Then we have Mr. Junior. Mr. Junior is the area administrator. He works with everybody. Then we have Miss Juliet, as was said before. She is the cluster coordinator for Cluster 3, which takes this church in for adventurers. Thank you, dear. Then we have, I'm going to ask all the members from Forest Lake that's in the drum corps, please stand. That's who was playing the drums for you just now. And their leader is also Miss Sherry. So could all the members from Forest Lake please stand? Counselors, Pathfinders, everyone, please stand. Thank you so much. We have Solid Rock Pathfinders and Adventurers. Please stand. Solid Rock Pathfinders, Adventurers. Thank you. Okay. And then we have Windermere, your sister church. Please stand. Thank you all so much for supporting Emmanuel. And I want all our pathfinders and adventurers from Emmanuel, please stand. Emmanuel, this is your club. I'm asking you to support your club. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful Sabbath. Good morning, church. I just have one quick announcement. This is the first reading for the transfer of membership for Christine Gooden from the Faith Temple SDA Church in New York to the Emmanuel SDA Church. Good morning again, church. So I have the club announcements this morning and also a short synopsis of our club review. So we have some upcoming events. November 12th will be our Adventure Super Fun Day. And remember that we're asking for new blankets and stuffed animals for the NOAA project. We also are asking for all contributions to be turned in by November 16th to the conference for the Christmas Behind Bars Outreach Program. Pathfinders and Adventurers will be having their first indoor field trip on December 3rd. We'll be going to Tibet Butler or the Zoo and Botanical Gardens. We will be closing off our club meeting for the rest of the year on December 17th with a parent-child day. All parents and guardian must attend with their child or children to the meeting. And the Oshkosh International Pathfinder Campery for 2019 will be in Wisconsin. It promises to be very, very good. And the theme for that event is chosen. So please, we're going to... Sh 
please wear asking for those who are interested. Please see me as soon as possible because registration has already been started, maybe about two years or so ago, and they only can accommodate so much. So if you're interested with that, please see me so that we can get your children registered. And for our club report, our Pathfinder and Adventurer Club meets every first, third, and fifth Sunday of the month, starting at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. We are starting the club with six staff members that will be working together with both the Pathfinders and Adventurers. And as you can see, we have different members that are dedicated to a certain group, but we are all working together as one big happy family. At this time, I would like to introduce the staff. We have Councillor Sindel Lewis, Councillor Debbie Lewis, Councillor Vanessa Mangle, Councillor Patricia Roberts, Councillor Leighton Smith, and of course myself, Director Alicia Walker. <laughs> and we have 10 adventurers and nine pathfinders that will be inducted later this afternoon along with all the staff members. The Pathfinders will be temporarily partnered with the Solid Rock Church to do drills and drum corps until we are able to manage on our own, of course. So as you know, we are a new club and we are in need of equipment such as tents, fire extinguishers, first aid kit supplies and everything. So we are asking the church to please support us when we are having our fundraising event. Please support us as much as possible. And very soon we are having a fundraising banquet for next year. So we're asking for all the support that you can give. And if possible, whenever you're putting your tithes, you can put an extra $5, $10, $2, even 25 cents towards the ministry. So we welcome everything. Change brings change. So we welcome everything. So you can feel free to go ahead and do that. I would like to thank Pastor Art Castle and the board for giving us this opportunity to start this club all up again. I know we started it, well, I wasn't here then, but I know it was started some years ago and it has not been in function for a while. So we want to thank them for giving us this opportunity to restart the club. And I know that God is going to bless us. So we're going to have many good years to come. I also want to say a big thank you to Sister Garden. I'm putting her on the spot again. But I want to say a big thank you to her because she's the backbone of this. Without her, without her, none of this would have been possible. None of this. So I want to say a big thank you to her. I call her, I text her, anytime, morning, noon, or night. She calls me, she checks on me, anytime. She's the one that is responsible for helping us getting off the ground, Amen. to get up and running, and we're going to be running for a very long time, God permits. Amen. So I want to say a big thank you, Sister Lurlet. I also want to say a big thank you to all the parents and all the children. Without you, we would not have a club. Amen. So parents, continue to support your children. I know it's a little bit much for you all right now because we just started, but just continue to support them and you will help to reap the benefits in the long run because these kids, they are am ambassadors for Christ Amen. and they're going out there and they're going to do God's work. So as we train them and groom them and send them out, in turn, they will be very much equipped to go out there and to do God's will. So parents, please continue to support, support, support. And I know we're going to be very active. So when you get your slips to say, we're going here, there, and everywhere, please don't be like, but they just went somewhere. Just continue to support them, okay? So I also want to say thank you to the staff again for your willingness to be molders for Christ towards these children. We are all looking forward to a wonderful blessed club year and many more to come. So together, together we can because we are all ambassadors for Christ. So please everyone come back this afternoon to see all the inductees 
being inducted, getting their, their sashes and their slides and their scarves and everything that they're supposed to get. So please come back out and support, support, support. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. It's time for praise and worship.
have Sabbath church. Please stand for a call to worship, which can be found in our bulletin or on the screen. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues to all generations. We begin in his name of the Lord who made us. Let us sing and worship together as we praise God's holy name. I will affirm our faith by sing, saying Exodus 20 verse 8 to 11, and St. John 3, verse 6 to 17. Remember the Sabbath to keep it sleep holy. The sixth day that thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maid servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that within the gate. For the sixth day the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all them in the midst, and bless the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord bless the Sabbath day and holiday. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent his Son to the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Father in heaven, Lord, it is because of this great hope that we have in our hearts why we have assembled here today to worship you and praise your holy name. Lord, we invite the presence of your Holy Spirit to tabernacle not only in this place but also in our hearts. We pray that your spirit will touch each and every one of us here so that when we leave this place we will remember and realize that we're not the same as we came in because of the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives. Bless us and keep us. May, your, may the name of Jesus be proclaimed today, we pray in Jesus' name.
So, Master, who is my neighbor? Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You know the law. How do you read it? Love God with all my heart and love my neighbor as I love myself. You answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But master, who is my neighbor? There was a certain man who was traveling down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And as he was traveling, he fell among thieves. And they robbed him. They beat him. They stripped him of his clothes and leave him half dead. Same day, there was a priest come along the same way. When the priest saw him, he walked on the other side. Also, there was a Levite. And as the Levite was coming, the Levite saw him. And when the Levite saw him, the Levite Levi also went on the other side. But soon thereafter came a Samaritan. <laughs> and when the Samaritan saw him, the Samar Samaritan had compassion. The Samaritan nursed the injured man. for oil and wine, took care of him, and put him on a donkey, and took him to a nearby inn. Next day, the good Samaritan came to the innkeeper. I'm leaving. If there's any cost when I return, I'll pay. Okay, thank you. Which of these, of the three, do you think is the man's neighbor? The one who showed mercy? And you answered correctly. Do this and you'll live. That was a well put together illustration. I don't know about that donkey though. The donkey, <laughs> the donkey didn't have his porridge this morning. Couldn't carry the, I don't know. Sister, Sister Alexis, Bryce took off the man's shoe. <laughs> Ethan, took off the shoe. Well, I'm sure it caught your attention. Show mercy to everyone that you meet and you will live. Those are the words that fell from Jesus' mouth. So we can take it to heart. 
At this time, we have a baby to be dedicated today. I'm going to ask the parents, friends, and family of Nolan, Thomas, to come forward. Everybody who's here in support. <clears throat> all family and supporters and friends. Good morning, sir. How are you? Nolan is seven months. All dressed up for your dedication. God bless you. As we prepare to witness this dedication today, I was reading some news and I came across a very interesting story. This mother, young mother in Wisconsin, I believe, this mother was pulled over and arrested and charged with felony endangerment and the circumstances are she was taking a portable plastic pool from her house to her sister's house and the pool could not fit in the minivan so she put the pool on top of the roof of the minivan and then put her son in the pool to hold down the pool. True story. True story. And it was a short trip because somebody saw it and video um, taped it and called the police and the police came and, and the police asked the mother, what tempted you or prompted you to do this? And she said, when I was younger, my father did things like this to, with us all the time, so I thought it was okay. And I thought about that story and how impactful parents have an influence over their children's lives. For good or for evil. For positive or for negative. And how you live your life my dear friends, before Nolan is going to determine really the trajectory of how his life and his walk is going to be. Because you are his role model, you are his examples. So as you live your life, not selfishly, but in honor of God, he will get a hint of what it means to put others first and what it means to put God first. And I pray as you stand here with all this support here that you have today, that as Nolan is dedicated today, that you yourselves would choose God. Today, tonight, tomorrow, choose God. He is your helper. He'll give you wisdom on how to make the right decisions concerning Nolan. And sometimes, parents, we can confess, we have forgotten sometimes that our children were even dedicated because they'll test us. And we'll think all kinds of thoughts, but we have to remember that as a parent, you, we are co-laborers with God to raise up a generation that knows Jesus. And God is for us. He's on our side. So, Nolan, this is not the first time we're going to meet, but I'm going to take you now. You going to cooperate?
not too far. You want to say something? What do you want to say? Nothing yet? Church, I'm going to ask you, in the presence of God, let us bow our heads and pray for Nolan and his parents as they're returning him back to the Lord. Sweet Jesus, this morning, we have the opportunity to be witnesses of parents who have decided, Lord, that they can't do this on their own, that this child, Nolan, belongs to you, that your strength, your wisdom, your discernment, your patience, your love, your long-suffering and forbearance needs to be present in their lives, that Nolan may grow up and understand and have a sense of who he is, a sense of purpose, that his life is not in vain, that you, God, have birthed him, you've given life to him, that he may bring you glory. As a church, Lord, today, a very special, significant time for us on this Pathfinder and Adventure Day to have our first dedication in Nolan. We pray, Father, that you provide for their needs, financial needs, mental, spiritual, Lord, everything that is needed to raise this child up in a, very, in a world that's gone crooked and wayward. Keep him safe. Keep his parents safe. And I pray, Father, that your name will be glorified because they have decided to partner and cooperate with you in raising this child up to fear you and to love you. Keep him safe. Keep him safe, God, from all harm and danger and the attacks of the enemy. Keep him safe. Put your sign, put your mark, put your, put your special hand of blessing on him that he may grow up and one day decide to follow Jesus and to be baptized and to join the people of God in being a member of this church. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to kiss you. Yeah, let me kiss you. Say hi, everybody. Sabbath Church. Okay, I'm just going to read something real quick. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Today's scripture reading will be 2 Corinthians 5, verses 20 through 21. I will be reading and you will be listening. Now then we, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beach message you by us we pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him Amen. this is the reading of God's holy word Good morning again, church. The adventurers and pathfinders will be coming to do a musical selection. And as you already figured out, the name of our club is Ambassadors for Christ. So they'll be singing a song about Ambassadors for Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We are ambassadors. 
Christ, love in the world, realize that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the 
because Stephen Stewart was born in Kingston, Jamaica.
November the 12th, Sunday, November the 12th. So we're inviting you to support that event. All right, I'm looking at the time. I'm looking at your faces. I'm looking at the time, and I'm seeing faces. I, I see some concerned faces. I hear some stomachs. So let me go right to the Word of God, shall we? We're going to go to the screen today. We're going to go to the screen. I may have to step down. You know what? I'm going to invite the platform, the platform to just come down with me. I'm going to turn on my remote here. Move this out over here. All right, we'll dim the lights a little. I'll get my Bible. And we're going to begin. Is that all right? I'll come to the side a little bit here. Can you see? All right, we're going to start with a scripture. I'll go to, let me make sure this is working here. Yeah, it's working. We'll go to our scripture reading, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. We're so thankful for our adventurer who read it. Let me just read it again for emphasis. Now then, reading from the New King James Version, reading from the New King James Version, now then, we are, what everybody? We are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Verse 21, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. I want to share a message with you today simply entitled Ambassadors for Christ. Ambassadors for Christ. What timing. Look at that. I, I, I stalled just in time. I guess my wife is here. I see my son walking in, so my wife must be here. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray? Father, we're so thankful for this, your holy Sabbath day. We're so thankful to be called your children. We're thankful to be in your presence today, and we're asking that your Holy Spirit will just come by and remind us how much Jesus loves us. Help us to realize that because of his love, you desire us to live for you. Grant us your blessing. Speak to our hearts, we pray, because we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ambassadors for Christ. You know, Pastor Hardcastle mentioned where I was born. I heard a big roar, but he just glossed over where I grew up. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. I said, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. I was seven years old when I came to this country. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Anybody from Brooklyn in the house? Amen, my sister. My one sister with me. <laughs> amen. 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 Ambassadors for Christ. As I looked at this topic, your theme for today, I, I wanted to share something with you in reference to this theme coming from a very familiar story in the Bible. It's taken from the book of 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. It is the story of who, everyone? The story of Naaman. How many of you know the story of Naaman? Let me see you raise your hands. Ah, a very familiar story for you. The story of Naaman. Well, 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 1. The Bible tells us what? Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a what? great and honorable man in the eyes of his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a what? A mighty man of valor. But, have mercy, but uh, Naaman, Naaman was a high profile individual. He was a high profile individual. Uh, Naaman was a successful military leader. I'm reminded of uh, 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 General Colin Powell. 
a very successful military leader. This was Naaman. Uh, Naaman was also respected by both the people of his country and the administration. He was respected by who? The people of his country and the administration. If Naaman were to run for president today, Naaman would win. Amen. Naaman was very well respected. He was a natural, or rather a national hero. A national hero. Touch somebody and say hero. He was a natural hero. But, oh, there's always a but. There's always a but. There's always issues, isn't, isn't there, huh? If you check all of our resumes, you'll find but. If you check the resumes of most of the people in this room, you'll find that, yes, there's some issues. Oh, you, you, you look nice in your Pathfinder uniform, in your inventory uniform, but. Huh? Did somebody say what? <laughs> you, you, you have your degrees, but. Oh, she can sing so well. He's so handsome. Look at the car he drives. Look at the house they live in. Look at her hair. There's always a, <laughs> always some issue going on in the lives of individuals. We have this facade, it may seem. We put on our mask, but behind the mask, something is always there. There's always some flaw. I don't know what your flaw is. I don't know what your issue is. Only God knows, and you know. Amen, somebody. But whatever it is, I want you to know that we serve a God that's able. We serve a God that's able to take us in spite of our issues and use us for his glory. Amen, somebody. Naaman. Naaman was a natural or a national hero, but he had some issues. Let me point this this way. Let me point this this way. Why is there always problems? But, you know, you, you got the thing on the screen, but. <laughs> so Naaman, a high profile, didn't we just do this? <laughs> but, we just did this. <laughs> All right, so. He had a lot of things going for him, but he had one big problem. He suffered from a disease known as leprosy. You see, leprosy in Bible times was just as AIDS is today. There was no cure. No cure for it. Uh, generally, people wanted to stay away from lepers. Didn't want them to come near them or touch them. You know how it is with people with AIDS, right? You hear about it and, oh, you want to stay away. There's a stigma. There was a stigma associated with leprosy. And literally, there was uh, things all over his skin and, and people did not want to touch it. Very contagious. As a matter of fact, lepers were asked to live outside of the city, apart from people, outside of society. Naaman had a lot going for him, but he had this disease of leprosy. People wanted to avoid him so he heard he heard about a prophet by the name of elisha what did he do he heard about a prophet by the name of elisha and went to see him and elisha told him to what go and wash in the jordan how many times seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean second kings chapter 5 Verse 10, so Naaman went down to the Jordan and dipped himself. You know the story. You may even know the song. Seven times as a man of God had instructed him. You remember, he did not want to go down to the Jordan. He said, listen, uh, the rivers where I am from, they're cleaner. But this Jordan, it was so muddy. I, I, I remember going to the, uh, uh, the island of St. Vincent. My wife is from St. Vincent. Is she here? I saw my son. Where are you? I don't see you. Where is she? She's somewhere. <laughs> She's parking the car. All right. I remember going to the island of St. Vincent, and we went to this island called Beckway. And we went to the beach and past the Hardcastle. I was in that beach, you know, and, 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 and the water was up to my waist. 
And as I looked down, I could see my toes. The water was clear. But I also remember being in the beach in New York City. I was in the beach in Long Island, and I was in the, I was in the water up to my knee, and I could not see my toe. <laughs> uh, 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 but, 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 but Naaman said, listen, the waters where I'm from, they're clear, and you want me to go down in this Jordan River and dip myself seven times? You know the story. He went down once, no change. Twice, no change. Three times, four times. But the Bible says he went down seven times. And on, after the seventh time, his flesh became as healthy as a young child's. Amen. Uh, he was healed. By the grace of God, he was healed. So Naaman is the main character in this story. You know the story, right? In this story, we, we find out about his disease. In this story, we see his search for healing. In this story, we see his experience with Elisha, the prophet. Uh, we, we see his healing. This story is mainly about Naaman and his disease and how he is finally cured. But, <laughs> in verses 2 and 3, we are introduced to a very special individual. A very special individual individual. Second Kings chapter 5 verse 2. The Syrians had gone out. Read that with me. The Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back, touch somebody and say captive. A ca brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. In other words, she was a servant to Naaman's wife. Well, verse 3 tells us that then she said, this is the young girl now, she said to her mistress, if only my master was with the prophet who was in Samaria, for he would heal him of his, of his leprosy. And Naaman, verse 5, verse 4 rather, and Naaman went in and told his master saying, thus and thus, said the girl who is from the land of Egypt. I'm just making sure you're paying attention. <laughs> this is what she said. This is what she said. That's what he told the king, his master. Naaman was cured of his leprosy because a young girl allowed God to use her as an ambassador for him, an ambassador for him. We got to define this word for a second. We got to define this word for a second, ambassador. Now, here's the technical definition of, of ambassador now, right? An ambassador is, you're looking at me, not looking at the screen. <laughs> an ambassador is a diplomatic official of the highest rank sent by one sovereign or state to another as its resident Represented. That's a mouthful. That's a mouthful, isn't it? In other words, uh, an ambassador, an ambassador really is a diplomatic official, highest rank, right? He's a diplomat, right? Sent by one sovereign or state to another state or country as a resident. You're going to live there. A representative living in that place. Ah, that's too complicated. Here's another definition. An authorized messenger or representative. An ambassador is basically an authorized messenger or representative. Are you following me? You see, the reality, folks, is that we are all ambassadors. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're an ambassador. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not just talking about your Pathfinder Club's name. Literally, we are all ambassadors, we are all representatives, we are all messengers of some form or another. Naaman was able to be healed because a young girl allowed herself to be used as an ambassador, a messenger. And I said, basically, we are all 
messengers. We're all giving messages. You know, basically our lives are like a billboard. Our lives are like a billboard. Every day as people see us, hear us, they're getting a message. They're getting a message. Young people, your billboards. What are you looking at? Oh, you're taking pictures. God, let me get in front of you so you can take my picture. We're billboards. We carry or we give a message, some kind of message each and every day. When you come to church, you can't, I, listen, I came to Emmanuel this morning and you gave, you gave me a message. You told me what kind of church this is. You told me that this is a church that cares about young people. Amen. You told me that this is a church who cares about their pathfinders and adventurers because you're having this special day. Amen. We give messages. The question is, what kinds of messages are we giving? What kind of ambassadors are we? And listen, we give messages in various ways. I took this picture. Can you see that picture? I took this picture. <laughs> Got to read this picture for you. Got to read this. This is a sign. Let me read what the sign says for you. It says what? This is a literal sign. All right? I, I, I saw it and I had to take this picture. It says what? No ifs, ands, or buts. <laughs> and this bus has another T. <laughs> Are you following me? No ifs, ands, or buts, right? It's the city law, it says. Ordinance number 07-19. Bans the wearing of saggy pants, apparel, in Opalaka City, parks and buildings. So in the city of Opalaka, Florida, they had to put up a sign banning the wearing of saggy pants by boys and girls. <laughs> That's the, that's the age we're living in. <laughs> in parks and buildings, public places. I even wonder if you go to some churches in Opalaka and see the sun. Ambassadors. <laughs> you see, w w when you're wearing or presenting yourself like that, you're an ambassador. You're representing somebody. The question... The, the question is, are you a proper representation? You see, when we come to church, that's why we have to dress a certain way. That's why your Pathfinder uniforms have to be, <laughs> you know, you got to be tight. Button up that upper collar there, my brother. Okay, button, button up the collar. Yeah, she did. She, what, say that again. She told us to, right? Yeah, and you didn't. <laughs> when we, listen, when we come before the Lord, we have to come a certain way. Amen. And when we are out there in the streets among other people, we have to make sure we carry ourselves a certain way because we are representing somebody. So even our physical appearance tells us that we are a messenger, an ambassador, but not only how we look. Mercy, have mercy. What is that? Mercy. Mercy. Our tongue, <laughs> what we say, <laughs> what we say, we are ambassadors. Listen, we give a message not only in our appearance, but literally through our mouths, through what we say, right? Oh, you don't like that picture. Let me change. <laughs> Somebody said yes, please. I'm going to read a text, but I'm not reading from the King James Version or the New King James Version. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. The text is a very familiar text. James chapter 3, verses 7 through, through 10. Let's read it. People can tame all kinds of animals. Birds, reptiles, and fish. But no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, 
and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Have mercy. Now, I'm not talking about Emmanuel Church. I know that there's a church down the street. I said, I know that there's a church down the street uh, that has members that use their mouths in a way that's not always praising God. That's not always blessing others. And what's shameful, what, what, what's sad is, James says, out of the same mouth, you can hear people say, oh, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, and the next second, you're in my seat. You're sitting in my seat. You need to move. But I'm a visitor. You can visit another church. <laughs> this is my seat. Out of the same mouth, out of the same mouth, blessings and curses. We need Jesus, folks. I said, we need Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. Let me be, let me be clear to you. Let me be clear to you. In order, in order to be a, become a church that makes a difference, in order, to, in order to become a church that makes a difference, we're going to need Jesus in our lives. We have to make sure that we have a relationship with him in order for our pathfinders and adventurers to be true ambassadors. They need to see an example from, uh, from their parents, from the adults, from the leaders of this church. Amen, somebody. As they see that experience, as, uh, 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 as we train them, they will truly be the ambassadors that Jesus wants them to be. But it starts with us. Have mercy. Well, 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 here's another text. Here's another text. New Living Translation, children. Huh? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. That ought to be our prayer. That needs to be the prayer of every adventurer. Amen. Uh oh, I need to finish soon. This, this one is gone. I, I'm going to finish soon, folks. I'm going to finish soon. I'm going to finish soon. Hang on with me. Hang on with me. That needs to be our prayer. That needs to be our prayer. Well, did I touch that? All right, what, what happened there? What, did I touch it that much? Okay, all right, here we go. Naaman was, able, Naaman was able to be healed because a young girl allowed herself to be used not just as an ambassador, not just as a messenger, but as a messenger for God, as a messenger for God. Well, well, who was this young girl? Who was this young girl? What do we know about her? We don't know her age. We don't know her age. Somebody said she's probably, she was probably seven. Did you say that? You said that? Maybe she was an adventurer. I don't know. Maybe she was 10 or 11. Maybe she was a pathfinder. I don't know. We don't, the Bible doesn't tell, her, tell us her age. We don't know her tribe. We know that she came from Israel. But we don't know what parish. <laughs> we don't know what parish she was from. Amen. We don't know that. Somebody said St. James. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. Listen, we don't even know her name. We don't. Wh what's your name? What's your name? We don't, I don't know your name either. <laughs> we don't even, we don't know her name. Her name is not given. What we do know is she was a what? A captive. Say captive. She was a captive. In other words, she was kidnapped, taken by force. What did she know? I don't think she knew a lot. I don't think she could give a Bible study. I don't even think she could preach a sermon. But she knew somebody who knew somebody. She knew somebody who knew somebody. Are you with me? Are you with me? Listen. How did she feel? She must have wanted to go back home. She was a captive. 
She was in a strange land. Her mother and father were not there. Could you imagine being taken away from your mommy and daddy? Uh, you would cry? Wow, wow. She could, listen, she could have felt upset at Naaman and his wife. Imagine, she is serving them. You could have dropped something in their food. <laughs> Put something in there. Slip them on Mickey. Have, have mercy. <laughs> but... Apparently, she cared more about his sickness. She, listen, she cared more about his sickness than her current situation. Have mercy. A little girl, a young girl. Here's a text. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. 14 and 15. This thing is powerful right here, folks. This thing is powerful. 2 Corinthians chapter Five, verses 14 and 15. Four, read it. For the love of Christ compels us. The King James Version says what? For the love of Christ constraineth us, right? Because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. Verse 15. And he who died for all, who's he who died for all? He who died for all, that those who live, who are those who live? Should what? Should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. This, let me tell you, this is a tough verse right here. This is a tough verse right here. This verse says that because of the love of Jesus, because I realize that I am loved, that was the theme, that is the theme for Pathfinder and Adventurers until the year 2020. <laughs> That's our theme, and that was the theme of our camporee. Because we are loved, because we realize that Jesus loves us, because I know and appreciate what Jesus has done for me, the Bible is saying that we ought to have the attitude that we're no longer living for ourselves, but rather living for him. I want you to chew on that one. <laughs> huh? If, imagine if husband and wives can chew on this one. Children, can you, can you imagine? We, listen, we all want to be treated. How many of you want to be treated fairly? Let me see you raise your hand. Put your hands down. How many of you don't want to be treated fairly? Let me see you raise your hand. All right, let me say it again. How many of you want to be treated fairly? Raise your hand. All right. Put it down. Those who didn't raise their hands, I'm going to preach another hour. <laughs> that would be fair for you. <laughs> you don't want to be treated fair. Listen, we want to be treated fairly. As a matter of fact, how many of you don't want to be taken advantage of? Huh? I don't know about you, but I don't like to be taken advantage of. I don't like it. But... There are times, listen to me now, listen to me. I'm not saying that we ought to be a, 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 a rug and, or, or mad and people walk all over us. But what the Bible is saying is that because of the love of Jesus, we have to have an attitude to understand that God is in control and that sometimes he will have us in situations that we don't like, situations that we don't really want to be in. But we have to trust that he's leading and guiding us and we have to be willing to be a light for him, to be an ambassador for him. We have to be willing to allow the love of Jesus to shine out of us in spite of the situation that we are in. Children, Pathfinder. Some of you, are, you're like, yeah, I'm a Pathfinder now, but I'll be 18 soon. And you're just looking on the other side of the fence, thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. Can't wait to get out, to go on on your own. Do I have a witness here? Huh? You don't want to raise your hands. I know. I, I'm going to put you in. I'm going to put you on the pressure. But let me tell you, the grass is not green on the other side. I'm I have a couple of young men now <laughs> who's realizing that the grass is not green on the other side. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to pu push them out, <laughs> and they keep coming back. <laughs> it's tough living in this world. Amen. 
Jesus wants us to realize and appreciate what he has done for us and understand that he's able to keep us in spite of the situations that we are in. And he wants us to live and be a living witness for him so that his love can be seen through us. He wants us to be ambassadors for him, pathfinders and adventurers, young ambassadors for Jesus. But only when the love of Christ is in our hearts. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, folks. Training these children, helping them to understand that Jesus loves them, that Jesus died for them, that he can empower them that he can help them to overcome whatever circumstances that they may meet. There may not be food on the table. There may not be food on the table, but he's guaranteed somehow, some way, they're not going to be hungry. Amen. He's, he, he's guaranteed that a roof is going to be over their heads. Irma may come and make a lot of noise, but you're still going to be able to wake up the next morning by God's grace. Amen. He wants us to teach them that there is a God, that Jesus is coming soon. He wants us to teach them that he's able, able to help them through. Amen. And so Naaman was, I'm almost finished now. Where's my musician? Where are they? They disappeared. They need to come back. I'm closing. Naaman was able to be healed because a young girl allowed herself to be used by God. Jesus can use you to bring healing to someone, to bring salvation to someone, to help this church make a difference. Amen. The young people in this church, the young, as, as young as adventurers, Jesus can use them to make a difference in this community. Do you believe that, church? Jesus, young people, wants to use you today to help someone. He's calling, and he's asking, and he's reaching out and saying, will you allow me to fill your heart and use you according to my glory? I'm closing now. I'm closing. You know, it's been a crazy journey for me and my family. It's been a crazy journey for me and my family. I remember New York City, we're there, the elder in the church, and, you know, things are happening, we're there, and there was a time where I was looking at going into full-time ministry, Pastor Hardcastle, because I was always in ministry. Do you know that you're all in ministry? Do you know that you're all ministers for God? These young people are ministers for God. They're in ministry. They may not be in full-time ministry, paid ministry, but they are all, and we are all, ministers for Jesus Christ. Amen? So there I was in New York City and contemplating going into full-time ministry, but dragging my feet. And then something happened on September the 9th, 2001. They call it 9-11. 9-11. What was that? September 11th. Did I say... September 9th? I'm in 9-11. I, I, I got confused. That's why I have a wife right there to, co to correct me when I go wrong. And so uh, something happened, and, and, and what happened really impacted me to go into the ministry. What happened? I saw them close down New York City. I mean, they closed the thing down. I mean, literally, that's when I realized something, Pastor Hardcastle. I was living on an island. New York City basically is an island. New York City, listen to me, the city of New York only has one direct connection to mainland United States, and that's the Bronx. You see, New York is made up of five boroughs, what they call boroughs, five sections. You have Long Island. Well, let me, let me start with Staten Island which is a little island, right? And then you have uh, Manhattan, which is an island. That's two, right? You have what's called Long Island, where, that has Queens and Brooklyn attached to it. 
And if you ever see a map, you see this long little island there. That's what that's Long Island. Technically, it's uh, Brooklyn, Queens, and uh, uh, Nassau and Suffolk County. And then, so that's what two boroughs right there. Uh, Manhattan and Staten Island, and then the fifth one is the Bronx. So they were able to close down New York. How? Well, well, to get to mainland, you have to either go over a bridge or go over a tunnel. So it was easy for them to close it down. If you're living in the Bronx, then okay, fine, you can find a road on out. But I wasn't living in the Bronx. And they closed down New York. You couldn't get in, and you could not get out. I said, Lord, something's wrong here. There are no mountains <laughs> down here. In the last days, <laughs> this is not the place for me to get caught. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've said the same about the peninsula of Florida, but that's another story. <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> and so there it was. Something had to change. But the Lord was calling me into full-time ministry. Now, now, here's the thing. When you are a representative of Jesus, an ambassador, you know, uh, that's a big responsibility. And he was calling me to become a pastor. Now, you know how it is to be a pastor, pastor. Everybody's looking at you. They're looking at your family. They feel that you must be perfect. Amen. Even when I was an elder in the church, they looked at you as you ought to be perfect. I remember when they first called me to be an elder, my wife said, uh-uh, we don't want to be. And now he's calling me into full-time ministry as a pastor. That's a lot of responsibility. It seems as though you have to be perfect. But here's the issue. I'm not perfect. There's, a bu there's not even a but. There are many buts. <laughs> But the biggest thing that I came to realize was this man, Jesus. You see, Jesus covers us with his righteousness. You understand what I'm saying? It's his righteousness, not my righteousness. It's not your righteousness. We don't have to be perfect. We just have to be willing. All we have to do is to be willing. To be willing to be an ambassador, willing to be a representative, and he will clean us up, he will fix us up. As a matter of fact, my, the car that I drive, I have a license plate on the front of it, one of those specialized license plates, and it says, Jesus. Now, it wasn't easy for me to put Jesus on the front of my car, not with the way that I drive. I'm just confessing. Not the, with the way that I drive. Sometimes my foot gets a little heavy. Sometimes my hand swings to the right and to the left. Sometimes when I'm in a hurry, I just want to get there. Are you following me? Sometimes I believe that I can move as the angels move. Light speed. But God reminds me, listen, man, you got this license plate on the front. You can't be driving like that. You got to calm yourself down. You have to represent. Are you following me? And that's when I understand that I'm an ambassador for Jesus. I, I, I need the blood of Jesus to cover me. I need his righteousness. I need his power. Listen, that's what he could do for every one of us here. That's what he's going to do for these young people. That's what he's going to do for you. Jesus is just calling us, reaching out to us and say, listen, I know you're not perfect. But are you willing? Are you willing to allow me to cover you with my righteousness? You can be an ambassador for me. You can be a representative for me through my power, through my grace. I'm wondering as I close, I'm wondering as I close, if there's someone here today that wants to be an ambassador for Jesus, if that's your desire, would you stand to your feet? You want to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. You want to be you desire to be. You're willing. You're saying, I'm going to stand because I'm not perfect, but I'm willing to be a representative by his grace. If that's your desire, would you stand to your feet? Would you stand to your feet? You're standing because you know you're not perfect, not by yourself, but you're saying, Lord, if you will cover me by your grace, I'm willing 
to step forward with you. I'm willing to go with you all the way. I'm willing to be a representative. I'm willing to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. If that's your desire, would you stand to your feet? Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. We're praying. We're praying. All heads are bowed. Pathfinders, adventurers, attention. Prayer attention. We're praying now. Father in heaven, we saw in the story of Naaman that you can use even a young child to shower people with grace. You can use even a young child to represent you, to bring healing to this world of sickness and disease. We saw through the story of Naaman that even a child taken by or through circumstances uh, not under their control, someone who may not even want to be in a particular situation, we saw that you can still use them if they're willing to allow themselves to live for you. And Father, we realize that we're not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. We realize that Jesus is willing to cover us with his righteousness in order to help us to be proper representatives, proper ambassadors for him. We're standing now because we want to commit ourselves. We want to commit our lives. We realize that by ourselves we can do nothing. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And we give ourselves to you even now. And while our heads are bowed, while our eyes are closed, I am looking in the congregation. And I'm looking for someone. Someone who's not a member of this congregation. Someone who's not a member of this church. Someone who, who, who may have been visiting. You may be visiting. Maybe you used to be a member of this church or another Seventh-day Adventist church. Maybe you're a pathfinder, even an adventurer, not baptized as yet, and you want to just raise your hands and say, Pastor, I need special prayer. I need special prayer. I need you to pray for me because I want to follow Jesus all the way, but I am just not strong enough. You just want to raise your hands and say, Pastor, pray for me. Pray for strength. Pray that I will give my lives fully to Jesus. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. I'm just asking that one person to raise their hand, that two person, those two persons, those three or four, to raise their hand for special prayer today. God knows our hearts. He knows our struggles. He knows our desires. And he's able, I said he's able to grant us the desires of our lives. He's able to change us. He's able to allow us to be filled with his Holy Spirit and be what he wants us to be. You just want to raise your hands and say, Pastor, just special prayer. Just special. Just remember me. Amen. God sees that hand. God sees those hands. God sees those hands. We're praying. Father, you know the desires of our hearts. You've seen those who have raised their hands. You've seen those who have not raised their hands and should have raised their hand. We're asking you, Lord, to do for them what they cannot do for themselves. And we will give you all of the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praise. Because we ask this in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. When Jesus is preached, he makes a difference. I want to thank God for Pastor Stewart. Thank God for what God is doing, not what he has done only what he is doing. This, 